This is the really cool, really fun to create realistic hologram effect that I'm going to show you how to create in Final Cut Pro in this video. The best part is I'm also going to give you a free plugin that is way better than Final Cut Pro's built-in glow effect, but more on that when we get there. Here is the raw clip we are working with and I've gone ahead and graded it quickly. I'm not going to go through that step by step. If you want to skip the learning curve to color grade like a pro in Final Cut Pro, then my color grading masterclass has got you covered. I also have this screen recording recorded on my iPhone where I just scroll through my Instagram account before selecting a photo and double tapping to like it. The first thing I need to do is to align the screen recording with my main clip. So I'll scrub along here till I sort of tap the screen and right there is where I want to bring this screen recording up. So I'm going to firstly just move it to the side so I can see my actions at the same time. And I've now opened up the screen recording about there and right about here I scroll. So luckily that's pretty well aligned already. Let's just see the second movement. Okay, so I'm scrolling before this movement's done. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep my eye on the screen recording here and I'm going to move ahead in time until it stops, which is right about there. And I'm going to create a speed cut with the shortcut Shift B. Now I'll go back in time to where I first touch the screen and scroll, which is about there, and I'll hit Shift B again. So now you'll see I've got two speed cuts here. And what I want to do is match the movement below. So here already I'm about to scroll. So the scroll needs to finish before I scroll a second time. So I'm just gonna bring that up to something like that. What I might do as well is just remove the speed transition here. That looks pretty good. So now we've got another time where I scroll and I'm gonna do the same thing. Create another speed cut, which I want to end around there. And I'll just drag it until this marker is right there around where the playhead is. And I do it a third time. So let's go to where the screen recording stops, about there. And I will speed that up as well. And right there is where I tap. So I'll make another speed cut. And as I tap there, I can just speed the screen recording up. Let me zoom in. What might be faster is just to speed it up four times and bring it back. This one, I definitely want to remove the transition because I don't want this animation from going from this little icon back to full screen to go too quickly. And the double tap happens right around there. So I hit Shift B again, and on the second tap with my finger, dunk, dunk, which is right about there, I'll bring that in. Right here, I'm going to remove the speed transition again. And then I'm just going to use the shortcut option and the right square bracket to trim that clip to the same duration as the clip below. So if we have a look at that, I scroll, I scroll, I scroll, tap the image and I double tap to like it. Perfect, so the timing is good. Now I'm gonna put this clip back in the center. So I'll just reset the parameter, the position parameter. And we need to rotate this in 3D space. So what I'm going to do, I'll just hit Shift Z to fill my timeline. I'll open up my effects and Ryan Nangle has a free 3D orientation effect, which is exactly what we need to rotate the screen in 3D space. This is a free plugin, and I did mention it in my last video of 10 free plugins for Final Cut Pro, so go ahead and check it out, but I'll leave a link to it down below. If I just apply this to the clip and start rotating it, what will happen is that these edges will be cropped off, which we don't want. So what I'm going to do is remove the effect, and first I'm going to create a compound clip using the shortcut option G. I'll call it hologram and hit OK. Now, if I apply the 3D orientation effect, you'll see you'll still have that same problem. But what we're going to do this time is open up the compound clip and just scale it down. I found that about 75% works well. And you can, of course, resize the clip before creating the compound clip. I've just done it the other way around. And what I'm going to do in this case is I'm just going to crop off the top and the bottom because I don't need that part of the screen. I'll go back to my main timeline. And now you can see if I rotate it, we're not cropping off any edges. So now I need to rotate this clip to match the perspective. So what I'm going to do is just rotate it in the X space as well, something like that, and in the Y space to kind of match the perspective of the phone. You can of course adjust the Z rotation as well and then tweak the rotation until it looks right. And then I'm also going to position it in the frame where I want it. I'll just open up the transform tool here and adjust it to something like that. What I might even do is adjust the perspective just a little bit more and that looks good so I'll hit done. Next I'm going to change the blend mode to something like screen and then I'm going to search for the bad TV effect which is a built-in effect from Final Cut Pro. 
that'll just help create these lines. But what I'm going to do is set this to pink noise and I'll bring the amount down to about 10%. And what that does is just create a little glitchy type movement on the screen recording. Now we've kind of just got the screen recording hovering in space. And as you can see, my phone moves a little bit. So we want to track the hologram to that movement. So what I'll do is I'll select this bottom clip and I'll come over to my trackers here in my inspector and I'll click this plus icon to add a new object track. I'll zoom in over here so I can be a little bit more accurate. And what I'll do is I'll make a tracking box around this corner of my phone. And then I'll hit analyze. And then I'll hit done once it's done analyzing the clip and I'll select my hologram clip, open up my transform tools, select the drop down arrow here by the tracker, make sure that my tracker source is set to this clip below and I'll set the tracker to object track. And then I'll hit done and I'll zoom back out to fit. I only want to track the position, so I'll make sure under my transform parameters here to uncheck rotation and just leave position checked. And now that hologram is nicely tracked to the movement of my phone. The effect is almost done. I just want to do one or two more little things. So right here at the beginning, I sort of double tap on the phone to bring the hologram up. So what I'm going to do is right as I do the second tap here, that's where I want the hologram to start. So I might just trim this a little bit and I'll move about four or five frames forward in time. And I'm going to activate my transform tool again real quick. Right now, my anchor point is set to the middle of the clip and I want it set to the phone. So that's where it kind of animates out from, which is a little bit below the bottom of the screen recording, kind of below the plus button. So what I'm going to do is just adjust the anchor point. So that's kind of where it shows up on the screen recording. As you can see, it's just a little bit below that plus. And then I'm going to offset the position again so that that anchor point is right there in the center of the phone. And I'll hit done. Now, when I adjust the scale parameters, it will scale from the phone. So I'll set a keyframe here for scale at 100% and I'll jump back to the beginning of the clip and I'll set the scale back down to zero. So over five frames, it's going to just pop up like that. And there's just a couple of small things I want to do to really enhance this effect. I'll hit Command Control 1 to open up my browser window. I'll head over to my titles and I've got a motion blur pack, which is free, by the way. I'll leave a link to that down below. And I'll just grab this motion blur preset, this medium one, and I only want it for the first five frames here. So I'll move forward in time and I'll use the shortcut option and the right square bracket to trim it. And then I'll hide my browser with Command Control 1 again. If I go through here frame by frame, you can see how we've got this nice motion blur as the hologram pops up onto screen. I also have another free plugin for you, this Brad West glint effect. You can make your own glint effect in motion by just creating a new effect, adding the glint effect to it and publishing all the parameters. Or you can save yourself the time and download it for free, link down below. So I'll add the glint plugin to this effect. And here I can adjust the tint to make it kind of more blue. And I can also adjust things like the streaks if I want it to glow more. And the glint softness I might set to 100. This bad TV amount looks a bit too much now. I might dial that back to around three. And lastly, I shouldn't have recorded this with a bright screen here in the background. So what I'm going to do is just duplicate this effect by holding down option and dragging a copy on top of itself. And I will add a new color wheels adjustment here and I'm going to darken the screen. At first, it'll darken the entire shot, but I'm not too worried about that right now. I'm just gonna bring that down, maybe bring the highlights down, and I'll adjust the shadows for contrast, something like that. Then I'll go ahead and look for a draw mask effect. This is an additional step. You probably won't really need to be darkening the background, but if you do have something bright in the background, this will help. So I'll go ahead and draw the mask around this viewer window, and I'll feather it slightly. I'll go back into these color wheels and just make sure that it's not popping out too much. That looks good. Now my hologram appears better over that screen. And one more time, here is the final effect. If you want more free plugins, then go ahead and watch this video next with the 10 best free plugins for Final Cut Pro.